defending twice winner of this event, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, 2009, 2010, if I recall correctly. And, and, and a funny quirk about your co-commentator, I was twice 87th in this race, <laughs> 2013 and 14, if I remember correctly. Exact, exact same results, was it? Yeah, yeah. There you go, jeez. Looks like we're on our marks here. Cyril Smythe. Ready to roll. With the gun. Wide open race today, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, it's a, it's an interesting one, the universities, because, like, a lot of the athletes would run maybe the interclubs the week beforehand. There'd be indoors going on. And obviously the club captains in the universities would, would, would be pretty recruiting pretty hard for this race. So even if you're not necessarily running cross country or you're, you're training for track, you probably be roped into this race. So you get a mixed bag of, of, of athletes. Yeah, and, and someone's yeah. taken a fall there. One of the AIT Aardvarks, I think. Um, there's always a bit of action in the first kind of 100 meters of these cross country when you've 80 or so guys condensed into such a short space. But uh, surely he'll be all right. What does Aardvark actually mean? I don't know. It's the first. Uh, it's a, kind of like an anteater type, uh, type <laughs> mammal, or, or maybe. So it's it, it's it's essentially a mascot, like, or that's the idea. Mascot, yeah, 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 okay. Essentially a mascot. Just and someone someone's gone off here very hard from the start. I can't see really from our view here who it is, but taking it taking it out at an honest pace in the uh, the initial stages of this race, anyway. Honesty is the best policy, as they say. And uh, well, certainly in cross country, there's no <laughs> point waiting to sit and kick. <laughs> <coughs> is it just it, it, it seems to be packing a little or packing up a little bit there maybe after its first two leaders um the pace everybody seems to be together it's not strung out too much or anything yeah that's right it seems to be athletes kind of well bunched at this early stages of the race it looks like Liam Brady in second from from AIT one of the uh, the infamous aardvarks behind our uh, mystery leader um. Big deep field in the varsities anyway. You can see this line stretches uh, this line stretches miles back. Yeah, it's a, it's a great spectator course this is like um I was just talking remarking on it during the schools races that uh, it's just it goes a long way to have a course where spectators can just watch the whole race from the one vantage point um and have one big lap it's a very easy like you know you don't have to deal with like if you're running in a race you don't have to be like okay i have four laps to go i have five laps to go you can be like all right i'll be running two or three big laps you know yeah exactly even yeah psych psychologically the uh the um the, the task of running two two or three laps is a lot easier than running six or seven laps is is definitely right and yeah be interesting to see how the team competition goes in this race as well i know DCU and UCD should have uh, maybe five or six guys all around the uh, 840 mark for uh, for 3K. So it'd be interesting to see how that kind of translates to uh, to results in the cross country. Yeah, yeah, well, it's 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 a flat enough course, so I think 3K speed would would translate over reasonably well. Um, you do have that kind of um, sogginess in the ground this time of year, which like you're, it's very difficult to find a, a hard cross country course in March in Ireland, but. Um, but ultimately, I think it'd be, and that's um, see, two two UL athletes leading it, leading the day. Is that Liam Real from UL? Uh, is it? That's yeah, Emma Jennings in third, Emma one of my training partners in DSD. Yeah, that's right, Emmett in third. Um, We've got James James Kelly involved here. Richard Owens. Uh, Liam Brady and from AIT is back in about ninth position. That's right, Brady. So there's tactical tactical tactics going on here yeah exactly tactical tactics the most tactical kind <laughs> but it looks it looks to be liam real as a surprise entrant in this in this 3k i've i've a memory of liam coming down to the uh, to the indoors in nina and running a barnstorm in 3k see John Moroni from Trinity there, midway through the field, good strong runner from Mayo, learned his craft on the hard hills of the west. Oh 
So I think we've we've confirmed that it's not in not in fact not Liam Reel in first place in this race. It's <laughs> Michael Herity from from UL. Not traditionally a a cross country stronghold. UL always do well on the track with the likes of uh, Niall Tui and and Thomas Barr and Barry Upton down there now. But they haven't been too prominent in cross country over the years. Um, has been dominated by by, by kind of DCU and, and and UCD really in kind of recent years. But Liam Brady's taking the front now for. Uh, for AIT, Liam had a fantastic run there to win the uh, Irish Intermediate Championships not too long ago, um, and I, he was also on the Irish Under 23 team that represented at the European Cross Country Championships in December. So it's been a fine form recently. Yeah, Liam's a very, very strong uh, cross country runner. He's perfectly suited to cross country. He's uh, he's got a power, lot of power and strength, and on a course like this, I know he'll be eager to to press on um, rather early because. There isn't, there aren't many hills, there aren't many tough spots, um, so he'll really want to throw the throw the gauntlet down early and, te and start testing the strength of other athletes. Yeah, that's right. And and again, going back to what we were saying about just the course being not nice and flat, and that three k speed might be a factor. You kind of have to look at uh, cross country runners like like Liam that would be suited to hills and kind of muck. And you really kind of think that in his mind, he must be thinking that he uh, he has to take this race on from an early start. And that's kind of what he's done. We're only five minutes in, and he's 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 hit the lead, and the field is starting to string out big time now. Our uh, our mystery leader, who we thought was Liam Real, is now <laughs> is now well back, and is is not Liam Real at all. I turned to, it turned out to be tactical tactics. Tactical that tactics. Was, that was guy kind of at the four there. From the UL Wolves. So we've Liam Brady in first with AIT. We've UCD in second. I think it's Dara Rennix in third for, for, for AIT, and then we've, we've someone from DCU in fourth. It could be Jamie Rossiter, but I can't make out from here. That looks like, uh, that does look like Jamie Stride, all right. Yeah, it does look like Jamie Stride. Nice and graceful. Textbook form, one might say. Born to run. So if, if that is Jamie, we've, uh, we've, We've this year's intermediate champion in, in Liam Brady in first, and we've last year's intermediate champion in Jamie in fourth. I don't know who won it the year before, so. So no, no DCU athletes featuring uh, at this early stage. Um, DCU obviously the defending, uh, the defending team champions. Um, but obviously it takes six men to score, so we have to think that it'll be going, going back as far as maybe the, the, the 20s and, and 30s in terms of place to, to score on a team. So you can see Brian Kelly moving, moving through strongly there for, for DCU. Cousin Cormac also in this race. Yeah, the team title is really, it gets really wide open when you go back as far as six to score because, you know, like... In a lot of other events or championships, it goes back to four, and it's usually confined to the same four runners. But if you, you know, if you have five runners and one and one drops out or something like, or if you have six and one drops out, it's like you're in trouble. Then you know. Yeah, definitely, and it, it, it is a it is, does draw an interesting comparison between the Irish Senior Championships, which were which were held last week, and obviously it's it's four to score. You know, the University Championships does emphasize a, a bigger degree of depth, needing a, needing six runners to to kind of cross the line all in a in good position. I guess that's not, it's not a bad idea because you've got, um, you know, uh, you, you've got more of an emphasis on, well, you, I, I suppose in, in the interclubs as well, you want to have an emphasis on participation, but at the university level, I think it is, is really important that you get numbers out. Yeah, definitely. I, I, again, yeah, it'd be, be, be d definitely more of an emphasis on, uh, on participation. So I guess if you have, if you have like, if you have to if you say, you have to have six athletes to score a team, you're going to find an extra one or two athletes if you don't have them. So, and that, you know, just more numbers on the line is always a better situation. Yeah, more numbers on the line. That's what they say. Success brings numbers, but numbers bring success. There Great we go. Great paradox of cross-country running. <laughs> so we've Liam Brady still in front here for AIT. And second, we've UCD. And these guys are kind of, they're running away from the field here, really. And this is a, this looks like turning into a bit of a tempo run for Liam. We'll see how long his uh, his companion can can uh, can keep keep pace. If maybe he's taking it easy and he's going to spring a surprise on Liam, who knows? Waiting to pounce. That's right. And we're we're still we're still not even at the halfway point in this race. Jamie Roster coming through in third with Dara Rennix. It looks like in in fourth. 
and then we have a good bunch here. So we have three UCD athletes in, in, in this bunch here. So UCD looking good for the, uh, the team competition already. You can see Emma Jennings then following that, uh, that second group. But it looks like UCD going well for the, uh, the team title at this early stage. Um, I can see Cormac Kelly from DCU there coming through. Um, no sign of Joe Warren yet. I haven't, seen, uh, I haven't seen Joe. I saw him outside supporting earlier. I wonder, is he, has he finally foregone his varsity eligibility after several successful decades as I, a I DCU think, captain? I think, he might have, I think he might have one year down still. I he think still so. one year down. This is his yeah, one year down. one year down. Okay, yeah. so we've just confirmed that Joe's on his one year down. I did see him before the race, and he said he had been struggling a little bit with uh, with it, with a cold. So he he's probably just recovering a little bit as well, and I'm sure he's you know I'm sure he's going to contribute significantly to the DCU team either way. So yeah. So it's still Liam Brady and Con Doherty here. Con Doherty making his uh, his his debut for UCD, I believe, in varsity competitions, and he's having having a fine <laughs> run for a young lad in first year. And Con comes from a triathlon background as well, so this is uh, this is a, a a discipline, cross country running, that's gonna you know suit his aerobic profile. Yeah. So a pace like this, you know, if he can just tuck in, hang in there and work aerobically from earlier on, I think he might be in a good position to, to challenge Liam. And that's right, if he, if he does, if he just sits in and makes Liam do the work in, in, in the early stages, we could be in for a, a very surprise winner here in, in, in Con Doherty. But it really is the two of these boys have, have pulled away from the field massively here. And unless we see a, a, a repeat of the women's race, it looks like our 1-2 have kind of been firmly established at this stage. We can see there Eric Kyo now has moved up into, into Ford behind Dara Rennix. Jamie Roster starting to fade back. Um, and D DCU not looking too strong in the team competition here. I can, we can see Jamie, we can see Emma Jennings coming through, James Kelly. I think UCD are very much uh, the team to beat at this stage of the race. A lot of yellow singlets. A lot of yellow singlets. 11, 11 minutes, nearly 12 minutes gone in this race. It's 8,000 metres, which would usually be around 25 minute mark, is usually a good barometer. Or yeah, 25, just over 3 minute kilometres would, would, would make sense. So, uh, not even halfway yet. Yeah. We're just approaching halfway. And what would you say is going through, uh, going through the minds of Liam Brady and Con Doherty here? What would, the, uh, what would the mindset be at this point in the race? Is it a bit of a, you know, you don't want to be the one to blink first, or...? Well, it's, 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 it's very much a case of Liam now having taken the lead and been pressing for so long. He's kind of wondering, well, if I stop pressing, does that, is that a sign of weakness? Do I keep going? Maybe he's, maybe Khan is a bit tired and I can break him early in the race and really test him. But like I said, if, if Khan's got that aerobic profile and he's, he's really, you know, I don't think he's going to find it too hard to just hang in there. Um, so it might be a case of Liam having to think of alternative tactics. Yeah, maybe maybe break pu pu push on hard now or or even maybe maybe sit and maybe let let Khan kind of dictate the pace if that's what he uh, exactly I mean it's like there, it's, it's a long way to go in the race and you know I, I don't think there's any harm in saying you know I'll drop back maybe here at this stage and it's what 4k into the race and then with 2k to go I'll, I'll recover for the next 2k or take a breather and then go hard the last 2k because that's something then you can really drive home to the finish it's just when you got four well if liam's been leading now for from from 2k into the race it's hard it's hard to maintain that you know yeah that's it it's hard especially you know the wind out there is quite strong so psychologically there's there, there is a bit more of a of an effort to push through as a in kind of first place which is such a long long kind of period of time um, he might be leaving himself open to an attack from Khan over the last um, the last kilometer or so. Yeah, I mean it's and it is. Uh, oh, there. Well, look, it looks just we come back into shot here, and it appears Liam has pushed on and broken Khan Doherty. Yeah, look, he's he, Liam Brady's made a big move here. Um, Khan Doherty completely out of out of camera here. Um, so Brady's obviously taken taken our advice on board and decided to push on and put Khan Doherty to bed at the early stages of this race. Um, that gap now back at 20 meters um, and growing it appears. Brady turning over quicker than Khan. The stride is lengthening and Brady's really, really picked this one up. He's got a long way to go. Um, 
maybe 10, 10, 11 more minutes. So you're talking about, you know, an excess of, of three kilometers. It's, it's a very, very early move um, from Brady here. Well, judging by the the gap that that he's created just in in the last in the last couple of minutes, he Liam could very well have sensed that Con was struggling. Uh, something that we probably can't pick up on from from where we're sitting, but um, and he might have used that to to just decide to push on and say, you know what, I'm feeling good. My my competitor here is struggling a little bit. Maybe I I, I can I can take it from here. Yeah, and there's so many subtle little hints you can pick up on when you're when when you're in this position. You know, you can you hear someone behind you; uh, their breathing is faster than yours, and you know they're working harder than you. And it's just gives you that little bit of an incentive to just kick on and, and put it to bed early. So, a move made by Liam Brady here um, of AIT. So AIT also, you know, will probably come into the shakeup at the end of things in the uh, in the team standings as well with uh, with Brady in, in in first and Dara Rennix in third at the moment. Um, and again, this bunch of athletes coming through is, pr is probably really where the team competition will be decided here. The sun's coming out now as well, breaking through the clouds. So it's uh, it's it's going to be a nice afternoon by the looks of it, which is uh, which is always a bonus. Oh yeah, no one loves, no one enjoys running more than running in the sun. Um, Cullum O'Leary, the Trinity captain, just coming through there in the uh, the green shorts, Rahini Shamrocks. Um, most likely Trinity's first uh, first runner home. I'd suspect on current form, but it's back to Brady here, and Brady is away and clear. And really, in in my recent memory across countries, I don't remember anyone kind of opening up a lead this size um, so early in the race. So, kind of, it would be out of um, you know, kind of a it would be a level of dominance that we wouldn't really have seen before at a at a varsity cross. Well, Liam, he's he's a. Uh He's a very strong runner, and if if there's anybody that can that can kind of take on a lead and uh, like that so early in the race, I think it would be him. Yeah, and that gap it that gap is now up to about 50 meters here. Um, and again, you know, touch wood, lest we kind of curse Liam Brady here. But unless we see a a, a, a collapse like we did in the uh, the women's varsity final, it doesn't look like Liam Brady is going to be caught. Just about three kilometers to go here. So Con Doherty in second. Con Doherty's still moving well, and we can even see a, a gap opening up between between Doherty and third place. So these two really out and away in, in first and second. As Brady kicks on now behind the, the, the furthest of the rugby pitches. Um, and then again, the chasing group here to decide the, uh, the last of the three medals. Eric Kyo looks to be in the mix there. Dara Rennix, Jamie Roster back involved, and uh, Michael Sullivan of CIT having a good run. I actually, uh, I was, I was involved in seeding the men's 3,000 meters for the the varsity indoors, and uh, I, 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 I overlooked Mark when when seeding the uh, the A race, and I was uh, abruptly, or what would you say, hastily corrected by Donny Walsh before <laughs> the uh, the final startless <laughs> went through. And he's hanging in well here in, in, in sixth place at the moment is Mark having a good run. So the bronze medal seems to be uh, really up for grabs. At this stage, there's a, a, a fine pack of runners challenging for that bronze medal. Uh, it looks very much like the other two medals could be sewn up. Yeah, I'm really, I, I'd have to agree, Brendan, on this one. Just as they're, as they're coming by the, uh, the scrum machine here, we can see it's about 50 metres from Brady back to Con Doherty and again, Maybe even more than that. We're looking at about 70, 70 meters now to, to Jamie Roster, who seems to make a move or have made a move. Um, we've got Dara Rennix, Eric Kyo, and, and Marco Sullivan. Um, Eric Kyo won a medal at the um, the 3,000 meters indoors. Actually, was was second place. Came first last year, but only good enough for second this year. And then we have, I think that's Keen O'Reilly from UCD following up. And then we have the big stride of, of Cormac Kelly from DCU and, and, and Emmett from DCU, both in the same college, but uh, clad in different singlets. And Cormac obviously wearing the, uh, the newer version, the Navy. As a, as a DCU alum, what would your take be on the, on the new Navy singlets? Would you be a fan? Uh, well, I actually supplied them, so I wouldn't, I, I'm not sure <laughs> it would be, be proper for me to say I don't like them. I think it, it, the idea was that uh, it, it was kind of bringing it back to, to the original 2006, 2006 singlet, the the navy, the plain navy, um, 
which was a kind of just a more solid kind of identity for for the DCU Athletics Club, and I think they're, I think, they're they, I think they look pretty well. So yeah, they look well, and and, and, and obviously Brendan has to uh, you know maintain his professional career. <laughs> <here, haven't laughs> any 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 further comments? No, I think the uh, the, the the DCU the DCU team um, really are are kind of back in the standings here in this race aren't they yeah look, they look to be back like i, I mean we've, we've we've a couple of ait athletes up close and then we've a big big bunch of ucd athletes so i think it's really ucd look to be in a strong position at this at this stage of the race yeah. um, and then maybe between ait and, and dcu for um for second and third but you know i've i've i've, I've, I've a lot of memories of having maybe three or four dcu athletes in, in the top 10 and we seem to have kind of dipped away from that a little bit with the passing of a uh, you know, obviously the likes of yourself and um, John Coughlin have kind of passed through DCU now. Um, David McCarthy doesn't seem to be here. Um, Joe Warren, obviously, on his, on his last legs, maybe a bit run down today, hasn't, um, hasn't featured as we thought he might. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a tricky one, all right. I think, I think it's, it's really a stage now where DCU needs, needs a new kind of uh, new wave of athletes to come in and uh, kind of pick up. And, and start reasserting at the front end of these races, you know. And I know athletes like like um, Emma Jennings uh, uh, would usually be, be be up there contending. I think Emma's um, been struggling a little bit with an injury, but um, I think there definitely needs to be a kind of a recruitment class, as they say in America, a strong recruitment class next year, yeah, in the exactly. next year or two, to, to reestablish the the DCU team. And no doubt Endo will be working hard today with all the uh, the athletes that featured in the schools championships earlier to. Uh, to uh, to ensure a strong uh, recruitment effort, um, and yeah, interesting point about Emmett. Actually, we kind of forget how how well Emmett has featured in these races over over the past. I remember down in Waterford in uh, 2013, Emmett, Emmett was fourth behind um, behind Cockland, Dara Birmingham, and uh, Mick Mulhair. So a very very strong field there. Emmett unlucky to you know come out on on. on I would say he's a very strong runner. He's uh, he ran in the World Junior Championships in the Steeplechase, I think, in 2010. He did not, did he? Yeah, um, he he ran night under I think nine oh nine for the steeplechase, uh, to run the qualifying time. So I think he he's he's a strong runner. He's uh, he he just I think he just needs the consistency in training that he's he's been missing for the last while, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be he'll be back up at the the the, the top end of the business end of this this race in the future. You know. Yeah, and uh, you know, Emmett's kind of he's finished college now, maybe adjusting to. Uh to life now kind of working working full-time as a teacher and stuff like that so it does take a time to uh to be able to transition from um from one to the other you know to kind of develop your routine again and, and kind of just get back into that consistency so yeah well that, that's it i mean like it's easy it's easy to say when you finish college and take up a job it's like you know oh i i can't run anymore but i really just i really think that it's a case of adjusting your your, your ambitions rather than abandoning them exactly yeah, yeah. um you know you got to make compromises obviously but i uh, i think when you're just smart and committed uh, about it you can you can do it effectively it's 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 challenging but like you say it's just that transition process yeah exactly and a very, very good comparison between uh, adjust and abandon there yeah like the uh you know, alliterative effect. We've we've Brady coming around now, and he's starting to uh, to lap uh, a number of athletes in the field here, um, coming through. I remember getting lapped by John Coughlin in a, in a, in a cross country. Um, <laughs> you know, just when you just when you think it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> you start to get lapped. So, but no doubt Brady can use this as a as a bit of an incentive to kick on. You know, he can pick out guys in the uh, on the horizon and work hard to to keep passing them out. So this will help him maintain his lead over over Con Doherty. Yeah, well, this is this is a nice. I mean, it's it's a good it's it's a good race for Liam. It's a good opportunity for him to to test himself against you know the the clock effectively because what he's doing now, uh, just try and try and run as fast as he can, get a good workout in, and uh, use this as a platform to build on heading into the summer, where I'm sure he'll be he'll be targeting the longer events uh, given his his uh, his strength in in over distances like this. You know. Yeah, like we'll most likely see him featuring in in, in kind of the five thousand meters. You'd think, anyway. I would imagine, yeah, or even a 10k. I think his, 10K maybe, his good, yeah. he, he has good strength for as well. And I, I, you and know, this yeah. year we've got Jamie Roster has made a move and he's actually passed Con Doherty into second place. It's very smart running from Jamie there. Yeah, and you have to think maybe Con Doherty might have uh, maybe burnt himself out a little early trying to keep the pace with uh, with Brady, and he's left himself open to attack from Roster here. Um, we've Marco Sullivan and Eric Kyo will be trying to bridge that gap from fourth and fifth back to. Uh, 
back to third place, but it, it looks to be an interesting, uh, interesting run between uh, Rossiter and Con Doherty as we come into the, the closing stages here. And I, I think uh, I, I think Con it was a it was a brave bid by Con to try and get after Liam, and you know it, 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 I think we need more of that fearlessness in, in racing um, to just get after it and. Uh, and, and so, you know, just hope, like, you know, you, 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 some days it might work and some days it mightn't work. Um, but I think that's, you know, a way of getting the best out of yourself and really testing yourself. It would be interesting to see where, how we're fixed with Jamie Roster and Con Doherty as we, uh, as they come back into shop. But we've got Brady here is streaking away. Um, he's got to do one more kind of, or he's got to kind of navigate one more set of rugby pitches and then he should be on the uh, the home straight as he kind of continues to lap the athletes at the uh, at the back end of the field passing a, an AIT uh, fellow aardvark here <laughs> and he's navigated his way through Ronan Duggan's quicksand as effectively as you'd as you'd assume But it's going to be Brady all the way, and there's no doubt of that. But it'll be interesting to see. And now, yeah, we're we're going to get a look at how Jamie Rossiter is faring against Con Doherty, um, as as they're going to come into shot here, coming around the uh, coming around the pitch. And you can see there the the extent of Liam Brady's lead. He's really dominating this this field, and is very much the class of the race today. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I think, I think this, this this angle is really, really, really emphasizes that. But it is. It's Jamie Roster that's coming into coming into second now. Doherty looks to be looks to be finished as Roster is kicking on, um, and it looks like Dara Rennix is going to give um, is going to give Con Doherty a run for third place now. So Con Doherty looked uh, looked to be kind of sticking with Liam Brady and, and and certain of a medal may now kind of just finish outside of that in fourth place. But look, it's going to be Brady coming around onto the home straight here. Still working hard, still running really, really strong. Um, 50 meters to go. Are we going to see a celebration? Uh, I mean, like it's 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 a it's an Irish title for Liam. Um, you know, I don't know if he, if he if he'd be the character to do a somersault uh, like like Kevin Mulcair did, but uh, I'm sure Liam will be will be satisfied with this win and. He'll cross the line, maybe. There we go. There we go. He oh. raises the right hand. Liam Brady, 2015 Irish University cross country champion. Absolutely fantastic run from Liam. He'll be delighted with that. Uh, we've got a good view of the second. We've got a good view of the finish here, but it's going to be Jamie Rossiter coming through in second for DCU. Great run for Jamie as well. Um, wouldn't wouldn't have seen him, you know, in prior years finish this far up the field in a, in, in a varsity cross country. Obviously, he's done very well outside university competition. So nice to see Jamie featuring so well in the uh, in the varsity cross and what might be his one year down as well. And here comes Roster flying down. Great run from Jamie, well timed, and it is. It's going to be Dara Rennix in third. Con Doherty's faded off the podium. Great run from the, the, the first year from UCD, but he'll be absolutely gutted with that. And we've got Marco Sullivan, Eric Kyo, Keno Riley it was before Eric Kyo, and now the athletes are starting to, to crack in. We've two from UL there as well. We've three from UCD across the line already, only one from DCU. Looks to be UCD and then in, 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 there's in DC, the there's DCU again there. Is that Cormac Kelly? Is it Cormac Kelly? Yeah, the Cormac Navy Kelly singlet. Through, yeah. Another from DCU there. I think that's Peter Matthews. So I think we're... Is that UCD again there? Oh, yeah, that, that was Eric Kyo. Here's Emmett Jennings, I think it is. Okay, so that's four DCU. Four DCU, five DCU. James Kelly coming across the line in a white headband. Looks to be another man from DCU. Oh, uh, is that UCD? Or is it UCD? There's Too hard to tell. Damien Landers, second in the 800 at indoors, came through there. But it looks to be five or six from UCD across already, five or six from DCU, and it'll be interesting to see who, uh, who who's going to take it in the end. I think a a AI, yeah. coming through for Trinity there, the first man home. And AIT had the top two, well, two in the top three, so yeah. they're a team to to factor in yeah, as well. Exactly. Two in the top three, and we've seen one or two kind of cross the line since. So AIT could be in the mix here um, as things progress as well.
crossing the line here in the uh, in the men's university championships it's going to be between ucd and, and dcu for the win but that's going to be all from us here um tell you, you should check the iuaa facebook page for uh, for confirmation of the uh, of the team result but it, it's going to be between ucd and um, dcu and ait for for the medals uh, any parting words brendan Oh, it was a good, good day of racing. I mean, Clongo's put on a great, could have put on a great f uh, facility and course here, and uh, I'm sure everybody will be hoping that that, that they can come back here and compete again. So, thanks to Clongo's, thanks to uh, to the sponsors, um, Low Health and Athletics Ireland and the Irish Schools Association, the IUAA. Um, 